alongside Maylana Martin Douglas. I'm Cindy Brunson. And Maylana, what jumped out at you in that first half of play? The turnovers for Arizona and the points off of turnovers for USC. I think that's the story of this game in the first half so far, and that's something that Arizona needs to make an adjustment on. That was a great screen right there by Madison Montgomery. She set a flat screen, which means her back was more towards the basket, and that was exactly where she wanted her offensive player to go, and it worked out perfectly. She got a wide-open layup. Right now, Maylena Martin-Douglas is joined by head coach Cynthia Cooper. Hey, Coach, great job of kind of handling their pressure early, but talk a little bit about Courtney Jaco and her defensive ability in this first half. Now they've got the offense ready to go, getting it to Jones down low, reversing well. Nice. Now that's really one of the only ways that LaBrittany Jones is going to get her shot off over Temi Fabenle. She's so long, but if you use that rim as a defender, and it kind of allows you to get that shot off without getting your shot blocked. Hi, everybody. Welcome inside the Galen Center. Kate's got alongside Maylana Martin. And Maylana, you talked about the two in the open and you were spot on because Courtney Jaco has been leading the way for USC. She has and she just does a great job of just knowing what that team needs. So whether it's defense, whether it's, whether it's offense, she does just anything that USC needs in order to win this game. And you see here she passes, but she also does a good job of getting her feet set, get ready for the pass back and knocks down the open three. Here she does a good job of running the floor in transition and just recognizes there is no one around her. She takes her time and knocks down the three again. And here just showing how she can distribute the ball and push tempo offensively by leading the fast break. And She's that's the thing, when you're playing against a zone, a zone is good to keep the ball out of the inside, but it's very easy to move the ball around, and that's what you saw on that play. It was great ball movement, and Jaco just open for three. And how about Lily Thompson? For a third time this season, Maylana, she has been voted Pac-12 Player of the Week, but I ask you, is she the best player in the Pac-12? And that's a very good question. I think that no one has really stepped up and solidified themselves as the best player in the Pac-12. I think you have good players that have great nights here and there, and you have great teams that are winning games. But I think it's going to come down to the wire to see who's going to wind up being the player of the year for the Pac-12. Right, and this is someone you definitely don't want to go up against. It's Kristen Simon. She's just so strong. She may not be the tallest one out there, but she has just that physical presence to get a lot of the rebounds that come out of there. She's doing a good job. That's what you need to do against the zone. It's very hard to rebound out of a zone. So when you shoot a shot, don't just run back on defense, attack, and you will have an opportunity at a second chance. Everybody, welcome inside the Galen Center. I'm Kate Scott alongside my partner, Maylana Martin. And as I mentioned off the top, Maylana, this game has huge tournament implications for USC. It does. USC has 17 wins and an RPI of 38. So they need to win three of their next five in order to get to that crucial 20-game mark. <laughs> You see here, Sanchez does a great job of taking it to the basket, but Kuwait, who just shows her athleticism and her length and just says, oh, not in my house. Courtney Jaco has done a great job of stepping up in the absence of Jordan Adams and Brianna Barrett. It's a very difficult adjustment to move from the two guard to the point guard with all the different things that are thrown at you. And Courtney Jaco has just done a great job of leading her team without their team's point guard. She is doing a great job of just showing her versatility. Like we said earlier, she likes to go to the basket. She likes to do her stuff down low, but she's showing that she can hit that that outside jumper, which is what she's going to need if she's going to score against Tommy for Benley. She will earn a trip to the foul line. She does a good job recognizing she has Hannah Gilbert on her. And Hannah Gilbert does a great job for her size playing that perimeter defense. But I think that uh, Williams actually has the advantage there. And so she does a good job recognizing that and taking it to the basket and at least drawing the foul. Taylor Butler continues to make tough shots. You got to hand it to her. She did a great job last night. She should be the most tired after that tough assignment on Brittany Crane, but she's not. She's doing a great job of contributing tonight. Irvine just looks really confident right now. They're doing a great job. Their shots are falling. They're playing good defense, and they're running the floor hard. No good. Offensive rebound. Garza put back good, and the foul. She's got a shot now to bring the Mustangs back within five. She says, don't worry, guys. We don't have to shoot from the outside. I'll just go get a three the old-fashioned way. I'll grab a rebound and get a layup and an and one right here. 
That was a nice spin move. She got away with one early. She might have elbowed, but she did a be good job of reversing it and then posting back up and showing her beautiful post move. Her three-point shooting and her team leadership, like her point guard, the, the ability for her to play the point allows Melina Washington to move to the wing, which takes a lot of pressure off of Melina as far as she's not running the team anymore. She can just concentrate on scoring. USC with only the one win in conference play. Why do you think that is, Melina? Um, I think one, the Pac-12 is a really tough conference, and wins in general are just really tough to come by right now, but I think it really hurts not having Brianna Barrett and Jordan Adams. I think those two players, they're leaders for them, they score a lot, and I think it just, it has taken them a little while to adjust to playing without those two players. But right now, let's send it over to Maylana, who's joined by a happy Coach Cynthia Cooper. Coach, great first half. You talked a lot about effort in your pregame speech. Um, Washington State has a lot of offensive boards. What are you going to talk to your team about doing in the next half?